Hello fantastic people, I hope you're doing great. Today I would like to show you how tile rules can help you decrease the number of tile sprites that you need and also how they can help you speed up the level design process. Um, if you ever worked with tile maps, you know that in order to cover all of the different cases, you will need quite a lot of tiles. Uh, on the Godot Engine website, we have this amazing um, image which shows all the cases that you need to cover. This is 48 tiles, but if we look closely, a lot of those are pretty similar, just rotated. So for example, this one, this one, this one, and this one are exactly the same tile, just rotated 90 degrees each time. And the same for this ones, and so on, so on. Some of them don't have to be rotated because they will be exactly the same in each rotation, like for example, this cross over here, or this full sprite over here and so on so on. We can actually decrease significantly the number of tiles we need. So there is in Unity something called tile rules which allow us to specify what should happen when a tile is at certain um, configuration or certain place. This means that we have continuation from left, continuation from right and then on the top and at the bottom we don't have any tile. So we can set it up in Unity pretty easy. There is a thing for that called, as I said, tile rule. So we click right mouse button, go to create 2D tiles and rule tile. Let's call it um, tutorial tile. Of course, we need a tile map. I already created one. You can do it by clicking right mouse button to the object and tile map rectangular. Now, in order to paint uh, on that tile map, we need a tile palette. So tile palette is like a paint box, so where you store all, diff all different types of tiles, including those um, with rules. So we can click on that, new window opens, and we need to create a new palette. Let's call it tutorial palette, create, we save it, and then we need to drag and drop here some type of tile in order to be able to use it. So we created our simple rule tile over here. We can drag and drop it and of course we don't see it because we didn't set any um, sprite for it. So be before we start setting details, let's prepare our um, sprite. So over here I have a sprite containing all of the tiles uh, we'll need. First I need to change the sprite mode from single to multiple. Then because my tiles are 32 by 32 pixels, I change the pixels per unit. Then I change the filter mode to point and the compression to none. Because this is kind of pixel art style, um, so I want the uh, edges on and the pixels to be um, very sharp. So that's the reason I'm doing that. I click apply. Now I need to slice the sprite to multiple tiles. I go to sprite editor and I already sliced it before, so it is sliced for me, but let me show you how to do it. I click on the slice and over here I selected grid by cell count. So I know that I have one, two, three, four, five columns. So I enter it here and then I have three rows and I enter it here. Then I press slice and everything is done for me. So they should be all individual tiles now. I click apply and close the window. Now I click on the tutorial tile and over here in the default sprite, I select this sprite over here. So the one with all four edges covered. What this basically means, wherever we place this tile and the no rules are met, this is the tile that will be applied. So let's draw something. Let's grab this one. Um, if you wonder why I don't see, uh, why you don't see here any grid, that's because I have disabled gizmos just for clarity. So we see what we work with. So let me disable them back and let's draw some crazy shapes. Basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to cover, cover all of the edges. So I try to create shapes which will require me to use all different, uh, all of the different tiles, right? So all the cases that might be there. I think this hopefully will do it. If not, we'll be adjusting that uh, in a moment. So now uh, we go back to our tutorial tile and we start 
adding rules. Or maybe just before that, let me tell you about some important settings. So basically here's the default game object. So sometimes um, for a tile, you may want to create also a underlying game object, which will basically allow you to um, store some extra information because details are just a sprite, right? So you may want to Mm, uh, set that sometimes. Of course, you have a default over here. So again, the same situation as with default sprite, but this can be also set like on the individual basis. So per rule. Default collider, this is pretty interesting. So if you have some crazy shapes of tiles and you want your collider to follow those shapes, you can change, um, you can keep this one on Sprite. Otherwise you can change it to grid. This is a little bit uh, more performant, but basically what will happen, um, this will make the collider around the whole cell rather than the um, perfect shape. And now we have the rule tiles. So we can add a new uh, rule by clicking this plus button. And over here, you see suddenly everything disappeared. Why is that? Because over here, you see, we have this small grid. And if there's nothing in a cell over here, that means we don't care about that cell. So whatever is there or is not there, it's okay. And now we have a rule which says, whenever there is whatever in any of those cells, just place no sprite whatsoever. So if we put here anything, then this will be applied. So let's start with our first tile, which is the top. And the rule will be pretty simple. So once you click, right, there is this green arrow and this means there is continuity. So there is another tile in that direction. That's the rule. If you click second time, there's X and this X means there is no tile in this place. So over here we see that's exactly what we want for the top tile. But then we also, because we have all the edges uncovered, right, we want to make sure that there's continuity over here. And now um, we want it to be rotating. So look what will happen when I click once over here in the middle. You see this arrow appeared and suddenly this tile started to be rotated, rotated and applied in other places. Let me draw one more shape, something like that so you can see it better. Over here, beautiful. Awesome. So let's create a new one. And now we have two options, right? So we have add and duplicate. So add will create a new one with default settings and duplicate will basically duplicate the one that is currently focused. So we don't want to duplicate. We go to the second tile, this one. And again, we have hard edge here, hard, hard edge here and the continuity in those places. Awesome. And again, we want to rotate it. And you see all the edges are covered now nicely. Um, just to let you know, there is one more setting. Um, let me just add a new tile. And you see over here, besides ha having the rule rotated, you can also have it mirrored. So for this, it would make sense, for example, sometimes to have it mirrored horizontally, right? Um, and vertically, and maybe both. So there is setting for that too. So basically once you, one, you click first time, you have rotation, second time you have horizontal flipping, vertical flipping and both. Mm, this is nice if you, for example, have a grass tile, right? So you don't want the grass to be at the bottom, but you want it to be on the left and on the right and on the top, for example. So the corner of the tile, so that this corner of the grass would be also over here. So this would be mirrored, not rotated, right? Because you don't want it in all four places. So now let's go back to the default setting. Let's grab the third one, this one. And again, we have hard edges over here and then continuity over here. We want to rotate it, add a new one. Hard edge here, hard edge here, hard edge here, because I have this dot over here. That means there's nothing over here, right? So let's and over here we have continuity. And again, we want to rotate it. Next one. This one, we have continuity here, here, here. And because we have, again, those two dots over here, that means there's nothing. So we want hard edge here and hard edge over here. And of course we want to rotate it. Then we take this one and hard edge here, hard edge here, continuity here and here, and rotate. We add new one. 
this one and for this one we know we want the hard edges everywhere. And we don't have to rotate it because it will always look the same. Now, uh, let me show you something interesting. Let me add um, different tile. Oh, by the way, you can rearrange them simply by drag and dropping them. Um, let me add, whoops, you see I have focused this one. Oh, and this actually um, shows exactly what I wanted to tell you. Um, so basically the rules are evaluated from the top to the bottom. And when a rule is met, um, it stops the uh, it stops evaluating the next ones and just applies this tile that it found. That means if you have very specific rules like this one, where you have all edges covered, you want to make sure it is as high as possible. So basically, generally when I work with uh, tile rules, the number of tiles that I'm setting over here indicates the priority, so from the top to the bottom. So whenever I have more covered, this should be higher um, than the rest. So for example, this should be here because I have only two places empty, right? Then I have one, two, three, four, five. So this is definitely above that. Then I have four here. So it's above that, but below this one. Five over here, so let's do that. Now those two, you see if I swap them, doesn't matter because it is impossible for this tile rule and this tile rule kind of execute, right? Because they are literally contradicting each other. So there's no problem with that. Over here, I have just those two empty. So this will go very high over here and then four over here. And you see, we went back to the place where we were and everything works as expected. So now for this one, uh, let's check what's next. Okay. So if we had that, we have this. Now we won't have to rotate it because it's um, it will always look the same. And over here we have four continuities and four um, hard edges. Let's move it over here. Focus on the last one. So when I add, it will create at the very bottom. Then I select this one. There are two dots at the bottom, right? So hard edges over here and the rest are the, um, and the rest are the, um, is the continuity. This one can be over here. Then we focus at the last one, add, select this one. Of course, I forgot to rotate this one. So let me do that. So I'm rotating this one. And this one with four dots also will have to be rotated. We have hard edge here, hard edge here, hard edge here, and continuity everywhere else. Focus on the last one at. This one will be pretty simple because we want continuity from whoops, each side and we don't have to rotate it, of course. So I'm moving it to the top. Focus on the last one. The next one is this. This will be also rotated. Hard edge over here and continuity everywhere else. Awesome. Focus on the last one. Add this one. And this is where it gets interesting. So we need 14 tiles. Uh, we probably could decrease it to 13, but I will be honest with you, I have no idea how. Because mm, let me just show you a nice example. I created it uh, or maybe let me just so it's clear create one over here so we have something like that and we have something like that right let's have a look at this tile over here so the top uh, middle one you see over here mm, this is the tile that will fit this situation and now it fits because I have no rules specified so it defaults to it kind of so let's first set it as we would expect so continuity here continuity here hard edge here and hard edge here and over here it works of course we want to rotate it and once I rotate it we would expect it to be also over here right but no because this is not whenever we rotate it right this one this dot will go to the left then here and then here it will never become like a mirrored or flipped in X axis right so this will never go to the other side with the dash or the long edge at the top. So for that, I created another tile, which is literally just mirroring this one. And this allows us to go um, 
the other direction. So what I'm doing in order to get rid of this is basically I duplicate this tile and I swap them. So over here I do that and then I select the other tile. And now those two situations are covered. Then I add another tile, this one. We have hard edge here, hard edge here and everywhere else continuity and we want to rotate it. And again, we want to move those ones a little bit higher because they are a little bit more specific. So over here, over here and over here. And you see, we have all the situations covered. There is um, literally now the only thing left for us is to draw amazing levels. So I can first select the eraser tool, select everything. Oops, I need to reselect the eraser, erase it then painting, select this one. And you see now I can quickly create buildings if I need to. So the amazing thing about it is that uh, you can use it also for the procedural um, stuff, because if you apply or if you create those tiles or place those tiles um, using script or anything like that, right? Um, this will literally, all the rules will be applied as you would expect. So this is pretty, pretty powerful. So you see, and suddenly I have kind of maybe ruins for top down the game or something like that. There are two extra things uh, when it comes to the tile rules. So let me quickly show you both of them. So over here I have create 2D tiles and create roll tile. Um, let's just call it test. It will be um, so much easier and quicker than those ones. And over here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create um, one tile. So one rule and this rule uh, instead of having this output set to single, we'll have the output set to random. And suddenly you see, I can set um, more than one tile, right? I have the size, so I set three. And over here, let me just drag and drop those tiles. So I have something prepared. And as you would expect, this allows you to, while painting, let me just add this test tile over here. Once we paint it, you see the random tile is placed uh, on the tile map. So this is amazing um, if you need, for example, stuff like flowers or stones or, you know, in general props, stuff that should look a little bit random and nicely and so on and so on. Um, you can use the noise um, to change how it displays. So basically um, the, the size of the noise that is used. So this is pretty, pretty nice too. Then also you can introduce some extra variation by using the shuffle. So fixed means that this tile will never be rotated or mirrored, right? If you select it to rotate it, it will get rotated sometimes. And if you set it to mirrored, of course, it will get mirrored from time to time too. So this is one thing. And then we also have this um, animation. So you see, we again can set three and we can select those three sprites once again. So one, two, three. We have, you see, animation speed, which we can adjust. Uh, and then when we start the game, you see um, the sprite gets, the sprites get animated. So this is pretty neat. Um, for example, for water tiles. So this is something really, really useful. And if you combine all of those three um, different types of rules, you can really, really, really create amazing stuff. This really speeds up the design process. If you found this tutorial useful and learned anything new, um, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, maybe leave a comment, and of course, have a fantastic day. Love you and bye bye.